objections are shaky, that our government grant is being reduced, the revenue support grant, and that the business <coughs> system hasn't arrived. And so with that, Madam Mayor, I'll, I'll make, take note of the time running out and draw members' attention to the amendment and suggest that we might support it. And finally, 
3 million pounds to improve pedestrian and cycling facilities. So, in terms of redoubling our efforts to improve the public realm, road safety, um, I think we've got a good, a very good record to down on. I hope it's evidenced by those figures. And then finally, um, work with residents in every community to ensure their concerns are listened to. Yes, we will um, do that. And uh, I am very pleased that we are just through back later this year. We are going to undertake a, another resident survey uh, following the, a very, I think, a very uh, successful survey that uh, we, we have done by Marie Fullers in, um, in 2016. And that will give us, I think, really good information that we can use to base our, um, our further work you know, uh, around the pledges. So I think on all of these points, we've got a, a good track record on which is saying, can I remind the council that we inherited an overspend of £17 million when we were in 2012, £17 million. And uh, I think to have done, uh, to turn that round is really good achievement. So for those reasons, Madam Mayor, we'll be asking uh, uh, Council to uh, reject this amendment and support the excellent work this Labour administration is doing with money services under the most extreme uh, difficulties. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are currently in post 
and what typically are the daily rates that are being paid, what expenditure has been incurred on interim posts between 30th of June 2015 and 30th of June 2017. And my second question was on the sale of land at Acre Lane. Now that the terms of the sale have recently been agreed, subject to planning permission, what process might be followed to identify projects that will benefit the communities in that area and take account of the impact of the development so that all the money does not just get taken into the council's coffers? Thank you. Thanks, Madam Mayor. Thank you to Councillor Gilchrist for um, notice of these questions. Um, to answer the first question in terms of interim officers, there are currently 12 interim stroke consultants in place across the council. Uh, daily rates vary between £350 and £720 per day. In terms of expenditure incurred since June 2015, the total gross spend is approximately £2,530,556. However, the interims, and we've got a number of these, have been covering vacant posts. Portion of this would have been funded by the budget for that post. In the time available, we've not been able to check this precise expenditure against budget. However, we estimate that 1.5 million was covered by the vacant post budget. So that's the, the answer to the first question. The answer to the second question: the sale of land at Acre Lane. Uh, there was a council target of 15.15 million in 2017-18. The all capital receipts raised by the sale of council assets to support key transformation projects across the council, as well as funding the council's capital programme. The sale of key sites, such as Acre Lane and Manor Drive, will involve phased receipts over a couple of years, and other, other identified sites are relatively low value. Capital receipts received are used to fund the capital programme agreed by council, and any permitted transformation project forming part of the transformation plan. Such programmes and projects will inevitably have community benefits as well as borough-wide benefits. Any planning application relating to this land will consider local <coughs> infrastructure requirements affected by the proposed developments such as public open space, highways, affordable housing. Uh, these are site-specific and will re relate directly to the development. The consultation which will take place during the planning application period may also raise other community concerns which will be considered by the planning committee along with other general policies which will apply. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Davis. Thank you. And I'll call upon Councillor Tracy Pilgrim to ask her to question to the Cabinet Member for Finance and Income Generation, Councillor Jeanette Williamson. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, my question is um, can the Cabinet Member please outline the work the authority undertakes? to ensure those who are severely mentally impaired, including those who have been diagnosed with dementia, are made aware of the possibility of council tax exemption. And can she advise how many people have applied for such an exemption in each of the last five years? How many were successful and the total amount of council tax that has been refunded for backdated applications? Thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thanks for that question, Tracy. Um, over a thousand properties on Wirral currently receive an exemption or discount for severe mental impairment. We estimate that this equates to over £700,000 of council tax relief per annum. The numbers show that there's a high level of awareness of help available. To receive a disregard against council tax, a person will need a certificate from his or her doctor to say that he or she is severely mentally impaired. The person must also be entitled to one of a number of benefits, including certain disability benefits, unemployment allowances, or attendance allowance. There will be some residents of properties who have severe mental impairments who do not qualify for relief, as they are outside of the nationally set criteria. Between 2012 and 2017, 1,684 applications were made for SRI relief. 209 or 12% were unsuccessful in that meeting with other criteria. The council is proactive in raising the, raising the assistance available to those who live with severe mental impairments. Our website contains extensive information regarding council tax exemptions and discounts, including a dedicated and freely written page relating to mental impairments. The reverse of every council tax bill says <coughs> also list the exemptions and discounts which are available, and this also helps to raise awareness. 
a one-stop shop price is knowledgeable of the requirements of the range of benefits available. They will explain the qualifying criteria that apply and are proactive in identifying the person meets the eligibility criteria. Customer <coughs> support and debate applications are advised to will also provide information to the council tax team in relation to any changes which may, which may change their eligibility. Adult social services also assist their clients who, when undergoing financial assessments, are supported with a benefits <coughs> check, including potential exemptions. The council also employs benefits advisors who can assist. Partner organisations such as the NHS and charities are also aware of the exemptions available and also signpost to those impacted and their families to appropriate discounts and exemptions. Precise figures of the value of backdated payments would only be obtained by examining each individual case which would take some time. So analysing backdated amounts would also require work to be undertaken to analyse refunds as there may be a mix of reasons as to why a refund was made to begin with. So this thing's not available tonight. If you did want it, it would take a bit of time, I'm sure you get it. Also, if you'd like to send you a prior email, we've got to take a while about some applications received over the last five years. Thank you. 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 May I have a proposal for a second, please? Do I see all those in favour of approving those minutes? I think that's carried. Thank you very much. Those minutes are 